Hi, my name is Andy Klimenko, and here's a quick demo of the Stackrock security platform. So as we can see here, I've got our dashboard up and running, currently running uh, one of the latest versions. Uh, as you can see, it gives you a pretty good executive dashboard of what's going on, violations, deployments. Uh, you've got some of the compliance readouts. At the top, you can see cluster, nodes, violations, deployments. Uh, let's actually drill in. So we can start to look at the network graph. Uh, one of the things the Stackrocks platform does is it keeps track of the metadata between pods and namespaces. So we can actually start to do some behavioral analysis and then eventually make network policy simulator recommendations on how to lock down your pods and namespaces based upon the observed metadata. And this is independent of any service mesh because this is using Kubernetes native network policy object types. Okay, so let's go ahead and say we'll drill into traffic. We can see ingress, we can see egress. We can then look at you know, different hours. Now my cluster hasn't been up that long, but we see we have a couple of anom uh, anomalous flows, and this gives you some really good information. Moving forward, let's take a look at violations. So violations are based on our policy engine. So, so the platform ships with 76 policies out of the box. And these violations reflect those uh, occurrences of those policies. And as you can see, the policy name, severity, we have categories, we have different life cycles. So our policy engine can effectively um, monitor and look for build policies which can come in through CI CD. We can look at deploy time which is through an admission controller or we can look at runtime. So what is actively running? So we can see here we've got a Longhorn network management execution. So that's more than likely a new pod coming up. We can go and take a look at it and we can see that it's running a bunch of IP stuff within the pod. We can even look at the enforcement. So there was no enforcement for this policy. We can look at the deployment. We can even look at the policy itself and look at remediation steps. One of the nice things about our platform is this idea of actionable information. So we're not going to just say there's something wrong. We're going to say there's something wrong and here's you know, a possible way to fix it. Okay. Looking at the deployment itself, we can look at how it was deployed. We can look at when it was deployed. We can even, if we wanted to, look at the image itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill into the image. Now we're actually looking at the CVE information for the image, the top CVSS score, the fixable CVEs in the image itself. We can even look at the Docker file, all from kind of a single pane of glass. And notice it took us from the violations to the vulnerability management tab. Other things we can kind of look at in the vulnerability management are the top riskiest. We can look at recently detected, most common, we can even look at Istio and Kubernetes vulnerabilities themselves. What's kind of interesting about this platform and the GUI is at any point in time we can drill in. So if we wanted to, we can drill in to say namespaces. We want to assess the different namespaces. And notice we have the filter bar here. So I can even go back to the network graph and I can do filter for namespace. And let's just pick one. Let's do traffic because we were looking at that. Right, so I can drill in at any point in time to the namespace traffic. Same goes for violations. Again, we can go ahead and look at traffic. And we can see all the violations for traffic as well. And again, with vulnerability management, we can do the same. We can even parse it by clusters because part of the architecture allows us to break these components up where we can run sensor bundles on other clusters. So we can run the basically the platform in spoke and hub or I prefer to run it in decouple. Uh, so one full deployment per cluster and that way it gives you a little more control. We can now start to look at compliance. So compliance we're going to assess based on six standards, CIS Docker, CIS Cates, HIPAA, NIST 800-190 and 853 and then finally PCI. Now keep in mind the platform is Kubernetes native and that which basically means we need Kubernetes, but it also means that we don't have complete visibility into the host. So some of the some of the benchmarks, some of the, the uh, compliance controls talk about like file permissions on the host. 
a good number of those are not applicable because again, we don't have that level of visibility into the host. Again, Kubernetes native, but we can absolutely drill into say 800, 190. We can drill into an individual control. We can bring it up to a new window. We can understand what the control wants. We can look at the cluster status and we can see that we're at 100% compliant on this control. Um, and what it's saying here is it's 50% compliant across the entire cluster. Okay. One of the other great things about the platform is not being a walled garden. If we absolutely wanted to export, we could export this page as PDF. We can go back to compliance. We can export it also as CSV. And through our API, which is our reference right here, we can absolutely export it as JSON, which gives you the opportunity to kind of manipulate the controls into an RM Epic has into a, into a, a different third party recordation system of truth kind of platform. Let's take a look at configuration management. So configuration management kind of ties some of the controls as well as RBAC information together. And this kind of gives the operator uh, a better visibility into the entire structure of Kubernetes. Like case in point, if we've got, you know, what service accounts are available to Kubernetes, uh, we can look at also um, users and groups. We can look at RBAC information, so roles. So right here, we've got an admin role that has no users and groups and no service accounts. So that might be a good way to remove, uh, actually remove that role because it's not being used, right? This gives you a good assessment of RBAC roles. One other t major tab we have is under risk. So risk allows us to kind of roll up all of the vulnerabilities, all of the violations, freshness. Um, here, let's let's pick on one. Uh, let's pick on Redis. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna assess risk based on policy violations, image vulnerabilities, service configuration, reachability, components useful for attackers, number of components in image, and RBAC information. So we're going to assess all of that and pick the lowest hanging fruit. So in this case, the Longhorn CSI plugin is the lowest hanging fruit because it has a lot more policy violations. It's the image is older than 90 days. It has image vulnerabilities. The service is configured with cap sysadmin added, right? So it's, it's basically running in privileged mode while it's using, uh, in case you don't know, Longhorn uses uh, the extra storage on the host to create a storage class within Kubernetes. So of course it needs access to it, uh, to the hosts with per, uh, privileged access. We can also look at the image freshness and RBAC information. Again, we can look at the deployment details. We can even start to understand process discovery and see how many of those pods are running, where are they running, what uh, violations have occurred since this started running. And of course, again, we can export this out as PDF and CSV if we need to do problem incident problem recreation. Okay, so so I've mentioned this is a walled, not a walled garden. So how do we get information in and out of the system? Well, quite easily, we can go into platform integrations. We can hook into any registry or scanner to pull aggregate information, or our scanners can pull from any registry. In addition, we have the notifier integration, so we can send those violation information to email, Sumo Logics, Blunk, Syslog, uh, even generic webhooks if you want to build your own system. And then we also mentioned the API. So here's where you would go to register API tokens. Under access control, quite simply, we can do uh, Auth0, OIDC, SAML2, PKI, user certs, and IAP. It's pretty, pretty standard. And again, roles. And then let me show you the system policies. So again, not being a walled garden, you have the opportunity to import and export the policies as you see fit. You can even go in and edit the policy. So if you needed to change, say 30 day, you wanna knock it down, you wanna knock it up, you wanna uh, whitelist, restrict, or exclude by scope. So we can scope into namespace, we can scope into cluster. You've got complete fine grain control. And that basically sums, oh, one of the other great things, we ship with a full set of our docs. So if you're installing our tool AirGap, the docs come with it. You don't need to bring any extra pieces with it. I hope this gives you a really good background on the StackRox security platform. If you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thanks, bye.